We wait for the word of the Lord as we wait for the rains, and our God shall come down upon us like gentle dew. Please join in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. Lift up your voice. Excuse me, lift it up, do not hear. Feeding, gathering, carrying, leading. This, this is how God will come. The old will pass away, a new world will dawn. Love, faithfulness, righteousness, peace. These will mark God's new day. Love needs a path, peace needs a highway. Even as we wait, let us make a way for God in our hearts and in our world. Our opening hymn this morning is, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We will sing the first four verses of it.
It's a joy to welcome all of those who are worshiping with us this morning, both in person and online. If you're online with us, we invite you to check in. Let us know that you're with us. Like our service on our Facebook page and share a message with others if you find it helpful to you this season. This morning after the worship service, those who are in person, we invite you to stay for our coffee time, which is hosted by Stephanie and Kenny Newton. And uh, Stephanie's already said there's tons of food down there. So those of us who are here this morning, please stay and enjoy some time of fellowship and time to, to break bread together as a community of faith. Thank you to everyone who has been bringing in your beautiful poinsettias. Uh, we'd like to have as many as possible for our uh, special celebration that Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon. And, and we invite those who can to leave them through either the Sunday morning, the 24th service, or in the evening service on the 24th. If you would like to have a mention of your poinsettia listed in the bulletin with an in honor or an in memory of, please make sure to get that information into Judy today if possible and no later than Wednesday uh, if you are sending it in by email. Um, then we, we would like to post that in the bulletin next Sunday morning and have it available in the afternoon for those who would like to know who the, the flowers have been given in memory or in honor of. Thank you for helping us with that. Uh, we were a little late getting the angels for, from social services for our angel tree families this year that we have uh, typically adopted. Uh, this year we have two families and it's made up of a total of uh, six children ranging in age from 2 to 15. And so we have uh, put individual names and lists on angel cards and because uh, a couple of the lists were a little on the long side, um, some of them were a little on the short side, mainly clothing kinds of needs, uh, we've divided them up. so. If you can tell there's a different name on each of the different types of angels that are hanging on the tree next to the entrance. So if you've not picked up an angel or would like to pick one up, uh, don't feel like you have to get everything that's on the list, but if you could get a package or two and put the child's name on it and uh, maybe there is a number beside their name, if you could include that, that distinguishes the family. If there is no number, then it's number 291. I know which family it'll be for. We need those back by next Sunday night at our evening program. Uh, like I said, it's very short. They were very late getting them to us this year, um, but they have to be back into social services the first of next week. So if you could pick one up today, if you are not a part of our worship service this morning uh, in person, but would like to have a name and a list, if you will email me or text me, I will be glad to get that information to you. Our, uh, my information is on our website and on our bulletin. So if you would like to get a name and a list, please let me know as soon as possible this week. Thank you. Uh, we are also uh, going to uh, take care of one of the members of our extended community. And Tina, did you want to say anything about the gentleman that we're going to adopt? Um. No, I mean, really, we just need like non-perishable food items. We're gonna make a food basket up for him. Um, I, I think Evelyn said he's probably like an extra large size. Probably an extra like, large size so clothing for um, like shirts, um, socks, just things that he, you know, anybody would need on a normal, on an everyday basis. It seems like he's everyday tired. basis kind of items. Food items are fine for him, but not for the children. Yeah. Um, any items that um, that you can think that a, a, a gentleman who is over 60 yeah. might like to have. Um, I won't say no alcohol, but I, you know we are Christians and <laughs> we don't know what the situation is, so uh, do do take that into consideration. I, I could just got just you know was standing here saying that, and I could think of two or three of my uh, previous church members who would have called out from the sanctuary, "Can I send him some scotch or some bourbon?" Or, so that that's where that came from. If you don't drink it, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Not if I get to it first. And a shout out to some Steves that are in my past. <laughs> um, 
gift cards are welcome also for both the children and the adult that we are taking care of. For the adult, if you will, um, I think I put it in the bulletin, um, if uh, how to list a, a gift for, for him. Um, so, uh, no, I, I may not have. Anyway, just put um, uh, senior, yeah. senior on there. Senior, that's good. Thank you. Senior on there. Uh, this morning, in just a moment, a couple of minutes, we're going to have the lighting of our Advent wreath, and we're going to light two purple candles this morning, and we're going to have the Emory family help us with the lighting. If you or your family would like to help us on the 17th in the morning, or on the 24th in the morning, or at the evening service, please let uh, me know, and there is a sign-up sheet somewhere on the, the front pew. <coughs> Uh, you can sign your name there, you can tell me after worship, or you can send me a text, and uh, if it, that, that time has already been taken, I will let you know, but we would love to have people helping with that. Uh, the, coming up this week, we're going to have a busy weekend starting on Thursday, the 14th at 5 p.m. for the rehearsal for our Christmas program, uh, which will be held next Sunday afternoon at 5 o'clock with a second rehearsal at Three. Uh, Tina, do you need to say anything about that? It will be multi-generational. Yeah, I'll be making some copies of the program and passing them out to those who want to participate today and then again on Thursday, um, 5 o'clock and then 3 o'clock on Sunday. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, also, next Sunday is the um, deadline for our new newsletter, both to name it, uh, so we're still accepting suggestions for a new name for our new newsletter that will start in January, and we're also trying, uh, because of the Christmas holiday, trying to go ahead and get a rough draft put together. So if you have something you would like to submit for our newsletter, uh, we would appreciate you doing that um, next Sunday. Anything else on that, Judy? Uh, no, uh, we just uh, we haven't received no entries on no entries. So, so anything, if not, it'll just be Fletcher's Chapel United Methodist newsletter, which is a mouthful, <laughs> but it'll work. <laughs> so right now we do, do not have a catchy name. If we don't name it in January, we'll continue trying to come up with a good name. And uh, one last uh, reminder: we do have uh, services at nine and at seven on the twenty fourth, and we are still collecting for the Sealston. Uh, winter protection drive and the uh, the food bank as normal. Are there any other announcements we need to be sure to lift up this morning? If not, I invite the Emory's to come forward uh, to help lead us in the, the reading and the lighting of our advocate. Sorry, Emory. In the days when God's people longed for peace, Isaiah declared, Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. We together today also seek comfort and peace, yet we are unsatisfied with ideas of peace that tell us to keep quiet and go with the flow. We long for peace, true peace. We for peace that bears the fruit of community, equity, and flourishing for all. We light these candles as a sign of God's shocking hope and just peace. May they be beacons calling us to repent and to live the good news of Jesus Christ as we wait and watch and labor for the day when all people can gather together to worship and glorify God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as our scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. Amen. 
Our Psalter reading can be found in the back of our hymnals this morning on page 806 as we read together from uh, Psalm number 85, verses 1 through 2 and 8 through 18. <coughs> we will read responsibly and we will use the response um, before the first verse, after the second verse, and again at the end. Will you please stand in body or in spirit as we read responsibly? The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Lord, you showed, a, showed favor to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You gave the enemy of your people. You pardoned all their sin. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. In verse 8. Let me hear what God will speak, for the Lord will seek, speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to the Lord in their hearts. Surely salvation, salvation is at hand for those who fear the Lord, that the glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before the Lord, and make God's footsteps away. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all of us shall see it together. Thank you. May be seated. And this morning, uh, Shannon is going to lead us in our Old Testament and New Testament lessons. sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the desert prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up. Every mountain and hill made low, the rough ground shall become level. The rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good things, good tidings to Zion, Go up on a high mountain, you who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout, lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power, and his arm rules for him. See his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd, he gathers the lamb in his arms. And carries them close to his heart, he gently leads those that have young. And our epistle lesson is Second Peter chapter three, eight through fifteen, page one thousand eight hundred forty-six. Do not forget this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, the heavens will disappear with the war, the elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth, and everything in it will be laid bare. 
Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. The day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our, that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. This is the word of the God to the people of God. Thanks. 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 Our uh, middle hymn this morning is number 213, Lift Up Your Heads, You Mighty Gates. I'd like you to stand in body and spirit as we sing together. John the baptizer, 
appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, as we spend this time preparing, preparing our hearts, preparing our homes, preparing the way to allow Christ back into our lives, to let Christ in anew as we, we await the second coming, as we hear the words of John reminding us how short time is and the, the words of the gospel telling us what we need to do to prepare for life eternal. Help us to take the words to heart, but not just keep them there, but to be your hands and feet in this world, to take them out as we work towards real peace in our world. May we hear those words today and have hope. Amen. Amen. So what is it that you really want for Christmas? I don't know how many times I've been asked in the last month, what do you want for Christmas? And I've tried to think both of material things and non-material things. And I realized that as I age, I nostalgically recall past Christmases. The joy that came from time with family and friends, the joy of Christmas caroling, the trips to visit homeless encampments or United Methodist Family Services or the resident youth there, shopping for an angel tree recipient, Few of those memories include the material gifts I received, but concentrated on the interactions with others. In recent years and months, I've had some family members who have, have gone on to the life eternal, and as I have cleaned out their items and, and gone through and sorted through and received, in some cases, some of those items or chosen to to let them go to someone else who can use them, or just flip through the Christmas cards that my mother kept year after year. It has triggered a, a variety of memories and thoughts and feelings, some of which I have shared with others. And it's been interesting to talk with my siblings about what they remember and what I remember, and to compare the memories and to have other memories triggered. So what do you remember most from Christmas's past? Is there one that stands out more than the others? Is there something that you hold dear and remember each and every year? Who's a part of those Christmas's past? What activities or actions bring you the most joy? And as you move towards this year's Christmas, in just two more weeks. What brings you hope as you think towards this Christmas? King Duncan writes about how author Sue Monk Kidd wrote in one of her books about her youth and how she would prepare for Christmas. And she talked about how in early December she would, would sit by the wooden nativity set clustered under her Christmas tree, and think over the last year of her life. She would think deeply about Christmas and the coming of Jesus. And then she remembers one time when she visited a, a monastery, and it was a couple of weeks before Christmas, and as she passed a monk that was walking outside, she greeted him with, Merry Christmas! And the monk's response caught her a bit off guard. May Christ be born in you, he replied. 
His words seem strange and peculiar at the time. What did he mean by, may Christ be born in you? At that time, she was unsure of what it was he meant. But as she recalled years later, as she continued to sit by her Christmas tree and her wooden nativity set, she began to feel the impact of those words. She discovered that Advent is a time of spiritual preparation. It's also a time of transformation. It's a discovering our soul and letting Christ be born from the waiting heart. May Christ be born in you. Did any of you remember the, the um, movies that were centered around Crocodile Dundee? There were a couple of them that were, were pretty good. And, and Crocodile Dundee was a, a strange, kind of strange character from Australia. And, and he, he would go on roundabouts. He would go walking just to see and to experience. It was never about the destination, although he usually ended up where he needed to be. It was about the experience getting there and the people he encountered and the things that he saw and all that that was about this world that he experienced. He focused on emptying himself to experience what is around him. How often do you do that? I don't know about you, but I often find that I'm so busy going here or there or trying to do too many things at once that it can be really hard some days to empty my mind to just experience the moment and what is around me. And yet as Christians, especially during Advent, we are challenged to do just that, to empty our minds and our hearts enough that we can open up to experience that single moment and to let God in to experience what God is doing in this moment, this time, this place, and where God is sending us next. John the baptizer, he was the cousin of Jesus, and he is telling us to experience the wonders that God is giving us in the here and now, to prepare ourselves by experiencing the world right now so that we can receive what God is about to do and to be ready for it. Martin Luther once wrote, God creates out of nothing, and therefore, until a man is nothing, God can make nothing of him. But as humans, we tend to limit ourselves. We like to put obstacles in our paths, maybe even take the straight paths and make them a bit curvy or add hills or side trips or try to take our own path instead of the one that is laid out in front of us. We make life harder than it needs to be at times, but Paul tells us to do something different. And we heard the words of John the Baptist also telling us to do something different. In our uh, reading from the New Testament this morning in 2 Peter chapter 3, the last verse and a half uh, verse 14 and 15a said, Beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Sometimes difficult to do. Walter Cross wrote a number of years ago about several ministers from the Sarasota area who were invited to visit the Ringling Brothers Circus at its winter quarters in Venice. Coming in via the performer's entrance, they passed by the elephant area, and someone in their group noticed that the ropes around the elephant's feet were not tied to anything. This oversight was pointed out to the handler. Oh, he said, don't worry. We never tie them up. We just tie a rope around their leg and drop it, and they think they are tied up. Walter Cross goes on to say, how many of us imagine ourselves tied up to something from which we cannot get away, when in truth the ropes are in our heads, our hearts, not on our hands and feet? 
several years ago when my brother was a seminary student. He had an experience during Anda that really impacted him. And he has allowed me to share his words as he talks about his experience in the following story. He writes, But our God speaks from the wilderness. Three years ago, I met a man who's now dead. His name was Lyle Miller. At the time we met, he was a student at Duke Divinity School who had cancer and was already dying. He had to give up being a student pastor. He left his congregations in rural North Carolina and moved into a tiny rented house on the north side of Durham with Megan, his fluffy collie. I was in that house with, with Rachel, which was Robert's wife, and another divinity student just this time of year. We were on a mission to take Lyle Christmas. You see, Lyle was getting very cold because of the cancer and the chemo, and he didn't have any extra money. He didn't have any family nearby, and many of the friends with whom he'd started school had already finished their degrees and were gone. We were taking Lyle Christmas packages from the Divinity School, warm jumpers and sweatsuits and leather <coughs> pants and gloves. We took dog biscuits and chewy toys for Megan, we even took a tiny little tabletop Christmas tree. We wanted to prepare the way for Lyle to experience Christmas, to straighten paths for him to be able to feel the love and grace of God through us. But you see, we were wrong. Lyle appreciated those packages, to be sure, but he was the one crying out in the wilderness for us. He was the one who had already come to see the salvation of his God. Lyle basked in our company, the conversation, our presence, our warmth, but it was he sitting there scrawny and weak, tired and poor, in whom Christ was already present. It was he who was a gift to us, who let us see the face of him who came for us to suffer and to die, yet rise again. It was in Lyle and his humor, his tears, his doubts, and his faith that we were given the gift of the coming of Christ our, into our lives. And out of the wilderness, John cries, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight, every valley shall be filled. Every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. These are the words of Isaiah, who told Israel she would be delivered from bondage in Babylon, who, who told God's people that once again they would experience God's exodus across the desert. The fresh built roads would lead them out of captivity and once again to their beloved homes. The book of Isaiah actually covers a span of time where that is so long that there had to be more than one person who wrote under that name. So we oftentimes refer to the first 39 chapters as first Isaiah. And it is concerned about the faithfulness of the people of God. And there are a variety of moods represented in those chapters. But the dominant one is judgment. These people were complacent, selfish, self-centered, they found solace and things and not in the ever-present spirit of God in their midst. Isaiah preached until he was blue in the face and it didn't amount to much until Babylon, until Assyria, double for all their sins, northern kingdom, southern kingdom, both overrun by enemies who caught them with their guard down. Then there was desolation. <coughs> Desert in the middle of the Holy Land. Desert, a land forsaken. And now we pick up in chapter 40, they are broken, afraid, longing for arms to gather them up and croon a lullaby. There's a lot of shock. After the initial shock, the beings around the table begin to nod along with the echoes of the Lord's proclamation. The presence of God is still there. The consummate, gentle presence. God never comes where God isn't welcome. 
but God is always ready to step in with those comforting arms. God never opens doors that we barricade. God does not climb mountains that we build up to block access to the deepest part of ourselves. God is there waiting for us to come to God. Hundreds of years after the book of Isaiah is written, John the Baptist uses these same words to tell of an exodus from the overhanging clouds of guilt and failure, a release from captivity, a godlessness of sin, of fear, from the oppressive burden of pagan rulers, unjust taxes, military reign, John proclaims the coming of Christ, the advent of a Messiah who will establish the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And today, we as humans on this earth find ourselves in much the same places, with world that is full of fear and of hate and of desolation, of parts of the Holy Land that have been turned into a wilderness, of folks who are still struggling and still putting up mountains and closing doors and building up all kinds of defenses against God. But John is confident that the one who is coming will offer us peace, a peace that transforms and equips and unites, a just peace that lifts up those who have been pressed down, gathers in those who have been ignored, strengthens those who have been made weak. We are called to move beyond individualistic thinking. The comfort proclaimed in Isaiah and echoed by John in the Gospel of Mark is not comfort for comfort's sake or for just my comfort or your comfort. It is God's comfort for us. We are called to think beyond I into the we and the us because John's words are not about comfort. He's stirring people up. He is confident that the one who is coming will offer true peace. And he's stirring them up so that they can open the doors of their hearts, open their minds, change their ways while there is still time. But the way is through the wilderness. And when we hear John's promise that God's salvation will come to all flesh, I wonder if maybe we ought to reconsider the direction of that call. The path John asked us to prepare, does it lead us out of or into the wilderness? Which way do we need to go to find God there? One of our former Methodist bishops, a bishop of South Africa named Peter Story, told a tale of his days as a pastor in the Central Methodist Mission in downtown Johannesburg. And he would stop each week at the mission that was there, a soup kitchen that reached out to the poor, the sick, the homeless in that apartheid-ridden land. And the volunteers would dish out bowls of soup and hand them to hungry people. The workers in the mission tried to be gracious and inviting as they did so. Many of them said, welcome, or God bless you, or take this in Christ's peace. But there was one who was different that Peter's story noticed, and, and this, this one always refused to say those words. And instead, as he dished out soup, this black pastor from a neighboring church would say to those in his soup line, thank you. Thank you to these dirty, homeless, impoverished, sickly people. Thank you for being Christ to me. Thank you for allowing me to serve you. Thank you for the privilege of giving you a simple bowl of soup. Thank you. As we embrace our Advent season, as we allow the word and the will of God to lower, to level, to straighten, to smooth the path of preparation for our hearts and minds and hands and feet, perhaps we ought to be under be willing to undertake a change of tack in our journey, our journey towards the Christmas manger. Maybe we ought to be willing to take a new journey through this wilderness towards the Christ who is our King. For the messenger God sent to prepare the way of the Lord didn't show up in the houses of state. He didn't appear in the sanctuary 
or arrive in the market square, the messenger God sent to proclaim the coming of Christ, to prepare the way of the Lord through every valley, mountain and hill, every crooked path and roughed up way, that messenger was a voice that cried out in the wilderness, still crying, in the dark back alleys, in the forgotten twilight of old age homes, in the thick unnatural silence of shelters, in the cold winding lines of food pantries, in the soft sobs of a clinic for battered women. The way of the Lord asked us into the wilderness, so the world we live in is full of pain, of lost people who have been taught to always battle, to fear, to hate. Our Lord asks us to walk into this world, showing love, experiencing love, teaching patience and tolerance, to walk the way out of our sanctuary, along straightened paths, valleys that are filled up for us, and mountains and hills that are brought low, that's the Advent call. It's an invitation to invite God to inhabit our world by working together to open up roads and remove the barriers and fill in the pits so that we can see God coming and rush to worship together. So John invites us into the wilderness to get dirt on our hands and blisters on our feet, to come searching for the poor, the sick, the outcast, the lost, so that together, with all flesh, we may truly see the salvation of our God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Lord, show us the way into rough and uneasy places. Walk with us. Guide us. Do not let us be afraid. Give us the opportunity to serve and to love and to share good news so that in the faces of our sisters and brothers, we might catch a glimpse of you, for you are coming into the world full of glory, armed with the power of life, and we long to see your salvation together with all your people. Amen. Today, let us affirm our faith using the creed on page 889 at the back of your hymnal, as we affirm our faith using words from 1 Timothy. I invite you to stand and body your spirit as we affirm our faith together. There is the one God, and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all, to whom we testify. The this saying is sure and worthy of the full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in the glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Friend's son died this week and he was 30 or 31. And his funeral is this afternoon. Um, so uh, we want to keep that family in our prayer as well. And Troy and Pam, as, as multiple deaths have hit their family this, this week. Um, we also want to keep Joe Donovan in our prayers. Joe has been under the weather for a few weeks and, and with his age, he, he's, it hit him kind of hard and he's gotten weak. 
And so he is needing some extra help at this time and isn't able to, to come and be with us in person. So please keep Joe in your prayers and maybe maybe reach out to his, um, his children at this time. We also want to continue to pray for peace in our world. It seems like whether we're looking domestically or abroad that there seems to be constant battles and people just trying to start battles just to start battles. And so we want to, to, to pray for peace. We also want to lift up the people of Tennessee. I think it was Montgomery County, Tennessee, that was hit very hard overnight by tornadoes uh, with a lot of devastation. And so uh, we'll, we'll keep that community and all others that might be impacted by this he heavy weather um, in, in our, our hearts and prayers. And then I'd like to share joy. Uh, we actually went Christmas caroling. It was the first time this church had done so in a few years. And, and we had a good group that went caroling yesterday. And it was, it was nice to connect with some people and, and to just have, have joy uh, of singing Christmas songs together. Are there other joys or concerns this, that you'd like to share? Yes, Becky. I would like to raise up um, a ninth grader at King George High School named Emma. Unfortunately, end her life on Monday unexpectedly, and I want to reach out to her parents and let them, you know. Um, and then I do have another. We are traveling um, this next weekend to go um, celebrate my older daughter's graduation from college. So celebrating your your daughter's college graduation. Yep. And we'd like to put congratulations, maybe in, in either next week's bulletin or in the January newsletter. Okay. Others. Traveling mercies for Lisa and her family. They're on a cruise. <coughs> traveling mercies for Lisa and her family. And traveling mercies for um, uh, Danielle and, and her family. I believe they're traveling this weekend as well. And we have another joy. Um, go ahead. We'll go over here first. I just want to say a joy for having. People in this church like TC and Evie or Michaela and Will that made us all smile. This made us all smile. Yeah. A good reason to come to church and never know what you might find happening around exactly. here. We were greeted by the Grinch this morning and, and, and a couple of others as we, we arrived today. Thank you for, for doing that. Are there others that you'd like to, to share this morning? And then I have one more. I understand that we have two birthday people here this week. Alice, I believe your birthday, no? Not the end of the month. End of the month, okay. And, um, and, but we do have Liz, and I believe your birthday is today. Can we sing to Liz? Yes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday Happy birthday to you and many more. We didn't even make you start singing the day. <laughs> we do have a number of people who are out sick. We want to keep them in our prayers. We want to celebrate with those who have joys and are off doing other wonderful things today because of the joys. Are there any others that you'd like to lift up today? If not, invite, I invite you to join me in a moment of prayer. I'll lead us in prayer and we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. A creator promise for the world. Hear our prayers during this time of waiting. We hear your promise of Christ's coming. Is, and we hear it filled with doubt, pain, often despair that there is not enough meaning in the waiting, and yet you are there to encourage us and to lift us up and to hold us in our pain. Help us to hear 
your pro the promise of Christ's coming with joy and anticipation. Our losses, our worries, they overtake us. And we often dwell in darkness rather than moving toward the light. Here are prayers of concern and of pain. You promise us peace. Help us to be your instruments of peace in this world that is in such turmoil. We have so many nations fighting over land, control, wealth, and power. We have people who condemn others for their genetics or, or the place that they live. Help us listen to one another, to get to know one another, to see God in each other. Help us to stop creating war and instill build up your kingdom on this earth. Create in us the thread of hope that pulls us forward from the promise to the miracle of new life. Create in us a clean spirit so that our journey is no longer weary, but filled with the energy of adventure. As the Christ child comes, so we too come back to you this day. <coughs> And we remember the words of our Savior, who taught us to pray with audacity and with love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God has given us so much. And as we come to worship, we're invited to give back to God, to share with God all the bounty that we have. The Lord will give what is good, says the psalmist. Let us share our tithes and our offerings and thanksgiving for what we have already received in the sure hope of our abundant world to come. And as the ushers are collecting the monies this morning, we are going to turn in our hymnals to page 87. And for the offertory, we're going to sing along, What Gift Can We Bring? The ushers, please come. <laughs>
May our giving in this season reflect our hope for the promised kingdom to reign in our world. We pray this in the name of the Messiah, Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now for a more familiar hymn, Heralds of Christ, number 567. Amen. Amen. 